Oh, there's something wrong with what my Stacy says. My spidey sense is tingling. Anybody call for a web slinger? <laughs> In fact, I got it now. Victoria Bitter. It's so hard to have a gay time on your own. It could be that great chalk and biscuit coating. It's so hard to have a gay time on your own. It could be that smooth toffee ice cream in the center. Or that whole delicious golden K time taste. It's so hard to have a gay time on your own. Streets go. I'm Danny. And I'm here to call out all you crack pack bitches. You think I don't see you there? I'm the OG of this shit. But you come after the king, you better come correct. I'm Danny, motherfucker. Who are you, crack pack? You smoke crack, you better watch your back. I'd like to buy. I'd like to buy a mint condition Spider Man number one, please. And I'd like an hour on the holodeck with seven of nine. Oh, Saturn's rings. Let me get that for you. Paper bag or triple mylar? Uh, no thanks. I'll just eat it here. Oh, oh no! What are you doing? Good, fair... <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, well, well. Power, power, power trouble. Please stand by. I was just about to hit live and then all of a sudden things start flicking like it's uh, the exorcist in here. And then just pop. Everything goes out. I go inside that things are going on. Uh, yeah, take, it takes a little bit. Of course, it has to be a stream where I've got things set up. I've got, I've got the dive cam set up. I've got my other computer over there, but we're here now. We're here now as requested, as the fans demanded. Uh, Jeremy brought up on his show the other day that uh, I do have a pretty cool Spider-Man collection, comic books. You remember comic books? And, uh, someone suggested, uh, you should show them up. Electricity in sheds is questionable, says Stephen Rockwood. It's not a shed. It's a cottage. I have air conditioning. Maybe that was the problem. <laughs> it's a bit toasty tonight. Uh, but thank you very much for uh, joining us here. Gary G says they tried to power up the wheel. Yeah, we blew the whole. <laughs> we blew the neighborhood. Uh, yeah, we will be going through. I've got a bunch of uh, my my uh, choice, choice collections. Comics, says Zaid. My copying me and Shelby now. I know, right. Uh, Kelsey and Patrick have been doing pretty well showing up their comics. I know Phil does that. I've done it from time to time, but, uh, look, I don't have that many comics compared to you guys. It's mostly Spider-Man's. Uh, but, uh, I thought if there's some fans out there who do, do like a little bit of Peter Parker, this is all, um, it's all pretty much, yeah, it is. It's all sort of pre 95, let's say pre 96 comics. Uh, the good times. Let the good times roll. I don't have my number uh, my number one spot, which was a bit of a, you know, a shame because it was friggin' Yellow Flash. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had Yellow Flash here in a while. And uh, now, of course, I lose all that, so I can't bring him up. But hello, Yellow Flash. He was in here at the start, a uh, big Spider-Man fan. And uh, someone pointed out, yeah, he doesn't know the rules. I mean, I can play it very quickly uh, just so he can get caught up. Uh, just very quickly show them the rules. I may be down, but I'm not out. Tom Brady's never out. You broke the rules. You I broke the rules. You breaking the rules. You, you broke the rules. You broke the rules. How you found out I broke So I hope that clears everything up. 
Uh, <laughs> and you know what it got me thinking? Uh, someone said, oh, yeah, Yellow Flash didn't say first, but that's fine. Uh, this man right here did David G for the third time this year. And I thought, you know, we normally do it. It's like the numbers can't up if you're consecutive. But Lama Giganti says that cleared nothing up. What are you talking about? That That's the rules. Everyone knows the rules. Uh, and um, I don't have him, unfortunately, anymore. It, it got lost in the ether of the internet. But I just thought, you know what? Rather than it being consecutive, let's count up throughout the year. How about that? I think that's even better. So I'm going to nudge this over here. I'm going to put, come on. Is it not going to, is it not going to nudge? Nudge. Nudge already. There we go. And uh, put him up there. Why is it's not? Is this what it's going to be like tonight? Do I have to double click now? Get on there. Oh my God. All right. Yay, StreamYard. What do we got to triple click now to get things done? So I think we're just going to cut up throughout the year. So it'll be a race, a race to the top number uh, throughout the year for who gets in pole position. I apologize to everyone that I missed at the start who were in the chat here, but I won't be able to say hello to you all. I'll just say hello to Gary G. Dark Lord Fudd, David L, Maromi's here, Mo Biggs. How you going, Mo? How Mo? Missed us yesterday. Great to have you back. Eric Grant, Cam. I'm expecting to show some impressive issues here. Don't be showing me 90s Spidey comics. Um, A couple. A couple 90s. Up to 95. That's it. Uh, uh, Noren Rad's here. We got the uh, Ellie Muniz, Suna GM, Zade Raid. How Zade? I was watching all those guys over there on that channel. Uh, great channel over there. Jeremy Burtz, Aviator Surge, Past Master Dan. Who else is here? Uh, I said hi to Gary G. David G. There he is. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for the internet. And we were, we were waiting for the internet after the, after the electricity had to catch back up. Um, and Sumo Thori. It's cute that Bancroft thinks he's going to keep track of this. It's easy, Sumo. It's easy because it's saved as my last thing. So well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and people, I mean, the highest we've ever gotten is Jeremy Burtz with 50. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I apologize to everyone who I can't say hello to, but we have 84 people watching on YouTube. Let me refresh Rumble. I see we've got Rayton and Luca already chatting over there on Rumble. Uh, great to see. There's uh, Jeremy in the house too. And Dean is here. Dean, you're a Spider-Man fan, aren't you? I'm pretty sure you are. Um, all right, well, we've got a lot to show, so I think we're just going to jump right into it. But first, before we get started with the, um, <laughs> no one says, I heard Bancroft is always in pole position with Rod. Well, that's, I mean, that's up to debate. Uh, before we start off the Spider-Man books, I just want to very quickly show you this book. Uh, where is it? Let me get this down here. Engage Dive Cam. There it is. Uh, the great, this is the first comic I ever actually got my mother bought it for me on a train station um and that sort of started that's like oh what's this comic books okay this would have been in like the mid 80s and i think this thing is from the 60s and i like victoria read it it's still funny look the colors are still great too so anyway there was that one i'm kate i'm taking you through a bit of a journey as to how i kind of um got into this then i got where am i going to put my comics once i've already looked at them i'll put them right there then i got this thing here from a friend uh, a family friend called matthew um sadly matthew i don't think is is uh, with us anymore but i remember this and i was like i don't know what this is i mean i knew spider-man i probably didn't know any other person on this thing but i knew spider-man from the cartoons and such uh and i i named it up here myself Anyway, it's just like a short collection of Fantastic Four and Hulk books and stuff. But uh, you can see it's all sticky taped back together now. Um, so that was the next thing I got. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. My friends started getting into comics. And um, uh, so I went down to the local news agency. This was in, what's the year? 1991. I walked down to the local news agency and uh, picked this up off the shelf i'm gonna to have to like angle these up because i don't want to unbag them and um, yeah i don't want to do that that's a web of spider-man number 82 i've 83 i've shown this off a bunch of times i mean it's not a particularly memorable issue other than it was my first and i was like all right uh yeah that's pretty cool i'm down with this i like it uh i've got a stack of web of peter parker and amazing here and i've got my 
uh, key books, my growl books next to you, next to me, which we will um, finish up on. You sure the sticky stuff was just, <laughs> it was nothing too crazy. There. I also wanted to show you guys just some of the cool stuff that they used to do in the friggin' in the nineties. Look at these. I found these. I was rummaging through my um, collection. Get out of here. Come on. Uh, these were like fake animation cells that they uh, gave. This is what you used to get with the comics. See, like what we're doing now in CG by putting in cool stuff. Like this is, they used to do that, but in the mainstream. And I got this at a news agency. This could have been, I don't know, it might have been, you know, like with Wizard Magazine or something. But uh, I kept these because I knew I would enjoy them. Look at the vulture there. Uh, these are rad. And like, that was just, that was the stuff that they used to give us back in the day, and I know people complain about um, prints and stuff. Uh, look, they used to give us prints too, uh, with our comics, all sorts of stuff. They didn't give us—I don't remember any magnets, but they did give us prints. They gave us animation cells. Maybe who's going to be the first CGer to bring back animation cells? I wonder who it's going to be. Um, all right, just a couple of other little if funny ones just to show you before we get into my main collection here there was this one i started reading this to uh to clark as an intro to spider-man because he watches spidey and his friends which is like uh spider-man gwen and they call him spin it's miles morales uh so i thought i'd show him when did this this is made in 81 uh so yeah ch check that out i wish there was uh, there was less glare on it i don't know how to get rid of that but uh is what it is um snarkin says i have that one. Oh, cool uh how about this one does anyone have this one i love this one i don't know if like i haven't read it in a long time but i remember loving it at the time i thought it was super fun super cool it was probably my introduction to wolverine at the time it would have been um yeah it was like it was way before the cartoon so uh i would have picked this up at some place along the way and uh yeah that was fun uh, Jay Lee says, yes, I have that one too. Excellent. Uh, Jasper's joining us here. We're looking at comic books today, Jasper, believe it or not. We've got 100 people here in the chat on YouTube. Uh, please do give the stream a like. Share it out, uh, all you Spidey fans out there. Uh, we're checking out some Spider-Man comics today. I'm not going to really go into the books too much, mostly because I don't remember a lot of stories. <laughs> I read these things at the time when I collected them um some of them i do remember but i remember the i remember the way they made me feel uh i remember the the covers that i thought were the coolest and that's sort of what i picked but i remember this one i remember enjoying that so and it's like mint condition too so happy with that one all right uh what do i start with amazing peter parker or web um let's start with let's start with web because that was the first one i ever got into and I've just I just grabbed whether Spider Man was like the third book at the time that I got it, uh, so it wasn't really, you know, it was like well, it was the third book. So when I was reading it, it was kind of like people didn't celebrate it as much, but it was my favorite, and uh, as well I liked it as well because it was the easiest one at the time to go back and read and and you know collect it all the way to number one. So it was the first one that like I didn't complete Peter Parker. Uh, until years later that took me a long time but web i managed to get that um straight away and this cover is still one of my all-time favorite spider-man covers it's just and actually the thing about web is the, especially the first 20 covers they're all rad and if you look at what they were doing in amazing and peter parker at the same time these covers were like trippy they would they were taking risks and experimenting and man i i love this run so this is like mid 80s mid 80s up until um uh 92 ish 93 ish maybe that's like that's my jam for spider-man mike which asm issue run would you say you treasure most in your collection we'll get to that i've got some of them uh i will we'll get to that uh i've got i got two of these so, so i got three of these like i don't know why i got two i probably bought it in a bundle somewhere i just want to flick through some of these some of these covers uh I, I i don't know like you guys will know the artists i'm terrible with the names um so 
You guys might know that better than me. Actually, I'll flip them over so I don't have to reorder them later. Um, what do we got here? Look, look at this. Even though the actual art itself is pretty ratty, um, the design in these covers were incredible. Uh, very eye-catching, big, bold. Look at Doc Ock. I love the, 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 the graphics. And also, I love this is my favorite uh, like title. Uh, you know the way it looked this one look at this look at what they're doing there with the with the colors and this is 85 and the the layout and everything that was rad it's called the gold rush uh jennifer grover for five michael apparently our new it people are not all australian it's just one guy who lives here uh what a disappointment oh, sorry jennifer sorry i didn't know them all <laughs> but thank you for the super chat nonetheless number seven check it out who drew that? Uh, Wilson and Breeding. Mel saw that and she was like, holy cow. I've got two of them too. I don't know why I have doubles of so many, but um, that is a friggin' gr like, let's put the Hulk on a web of spot. Like they were doing cool things back in the mid 80s. I'll tell you what, rad cover. Uh, look at this. I would like, these would make amazing prints. Uh, just look at the like that blue with the black. Who loves the blacks? Like I was down with the black suit when I found out about the black suit. I just like that's all I wanted to read. <laughs> but that's freaking rad, man. Uh, there we go. They were they were changing up styles. I mean, look at this. Okay, so look at that style, and then bam, number ten. Look at this. It's like it's like almost a cross between a photo and a paintograph. A, pa a, pa a paintograph. A painting, a photograph, and a painting. Um, yeah, I did like I did like the black suit, but I was happy when uh, it uh, he it saw we went back. Mo says I was down with the black suit. He calls bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's rad. These colors, I tell you. I mean, this is just what a time, what a time to collect comics. I was, you know, obviously I was too young at this point, but I was so happy when I I grabbed this whole collection, like number one to a hundred in one in one get and it was just like i just spent the next few months just it was like the best time of my life when i was you know 11 years old or something look there's mary jane look there's the punisher gonna surprise mary jane it's freaking rad uh pretty cool there got j jonah jameson and the the newspaper there even just these super simple ones, they just made such great covers. They weren't busy. They were, uh, they're really graphic. And I don't know if the same thing was happening on the others at the same time. I don't, I haven't really cross checked them. I think they were just really experimenting with, um, web. Did web start out as a standalone before the title start interweaving a lot? Yes. Yeah. Back in the day, they didn't really jump across each other um it was all yeah i mean a lot of this stuff was standalone issues um you know you got here who have we got here uh i don't even know who that is who have we got here this guy magma <laughs> not one of i don't think that's one of marvel's most popular uh bad guys but he was there like this one i always remember check that out he's just like on a it's just his suit lying on rubble where is spider-man it's freaking awesome ellie muna says this is my childhood dude it's rad introducing humbug and also the deadly debut of the man called solo who isn't a cross between daredevil and the punisher uh issue 20 they did one of those like that's so cool. That is so 80s. It actually looks a bit 70s. It actually looks like that probably would have looked outdated uh, back in the day. But uh, there you go. Camel told me that these ones here with the, they're like their reprints. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, oh, black suit versus red suit. And then I'll finish on this one 22 for Web of Spider Man. Like, I tell you, like just art. A friggin'. I friggin' dig it. Cam says, this is my college years. 
That's nice. It's, it was nice to bring you all back. Man, these things, they smell so good. Mm. Oh, whenever I open my uh, comic, I've got a, like a, a bookshelf, and it's, but it's, the doors are closed. And um, whenever I open up, I get that waft, and it's like, uh, damn. One is direct edition, one is newsstand. There you go. These are direct edition comics, not newsprints. There you go. Thank you, guys. All right. So that was Web. We're doing great for time. Fantastic. I, that was, I was worried. I didn't know how we we're going to go uh, because I've got three more stacks. And you guys, you know, you might want to talk a little bit more about them. And that one was just a, mostly about the covers. Uh, Bancroft ends on a black crotch. These things, they smell so good. Uh, Sumo says, yeah, it is direct. All right. Peter Parker was not my favorite. So out of the three, uh, I know I always, I always swap between web and amazing. Usually, um, I didn't love who was the artist on in the nineties on Peter Parker, a uh, spectacular Spider-Man. I didn't love it. I mean, I was, I was fine with it. It was very different, but, um, I tell you the, the older books back in the day, they're like, when I found them, I was like, I need all of these. Uh, so here we've got uh, number five. And this is, who is this? I don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> it looks like Cockrum. 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 <laughs> Cockrum. Uh, man, like this style, this is peak to me. Uh, it's like late 70s to mid 80s i just like this is comic books to me i've like trapped between the hitman and the vulture the vulture i think was probably um one of my favorite i never loved green goblin everyone loved green goblin but to me it was the vulture and another guy and we'll, we'll get to him shortly check out this i actually used this in a in a thumbnail or something the white tiger strikes <laughs> When are we going to get the white tiger in the MCU? Uh, we get the whitest guy possible to play it. Like, who's the whitest white guy? Uh, Cockrum do X-Men uh, before Burn took over. Man, he's friggin' awesome. I love it. Like this, uh, you know, the the the, the anatomy is, isn't perfect. It's a bit Kirby-esque in that sense, but it's so much more refined and sophisticated. Uh, dig it. Um, Beckroft loves a shot of Cockrum. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, this is funny. First time ever in a color comic, Marvel's most controversial creation the white tiger strikes the flames of protest. There you go. Uh, we are getting white tiger in the MCU, it's going to be a girl. Oh, cool. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, like. <sighs> Who wouldn't want that as a poster? Like, if you're a big Spider-Man fan, look at that. Like, how graphic that is. Just the just the shadows with the white. That looks like a screen print. I want that on a T-shirt. The final battle. I doubt it was, but... And look, they don't even... Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, uh, they don't even outline Spider-Man. It's just the webs. That's friggin'... That is awesome. Uh, that was a great storyline, says Improbi. Yeah, I can't, like, it's been, like, I would have read this 25 years ago. More, actually. God, has it been that long? That's insane. All right, we're getting to my favorite um, Spider-Man storyline. Uh, and it involves uh, this gentleman right here. The Hobgoblin is my favorite character. I've got a bunch of key hobgoblin books i don't know if i have all of them they got pretty expensive um but i got the trade so I, i've got that trade sitting right there and it's ratty as hell it's like i've read through it so many times but um macaulay culkin says jolly green he's very white yeah hobgoblin the best the better goblin right like he was like what if the green goblin was the punisher and didn't had no f's to give um Hobgoblin and the Rose. Yes. Uh, man, yeah, these were uh, these are great books. And, I mean, look at that cover. And there you got uh, Cat there. That's Milgram drawing that. This is peak, peak Spider-Man to me. 
and this is obviously where well, this is like 83 so i had to go back so i stopped collecting spider-man in at some point during the mid 90s i ch i was checking my books and there's books in there i didn't even rem i have like i'm like gandalf i have no memory of this i was just so checked out i was just collecting because i was a collector and i don't remember i didn't even know if i read them it started getting terrible in the sort of mid 90s that's when it all went bankrupt and they were trying to force me to buy 100 different books 100 different titles and i was like screw this i went back and bought this stuff i you know because at that point comic book shops were getting big so i was like i can just rather than spending my 30 dollars a week on um on uh you know this new shit i go back and read this stuff and that's what i did so that's why i have a lot of this stuff i was able to go back and collect a lot more of it when i started making a bit more money as an adult michael I apologize if you've talked about this already and I missed it, but how do you feel about Velma? Uh, I feel nothing, Jennifer. I, I did briefly talk about it, but I only just to laugh at the the silliness of the whole internet reaction to it, not the actual show. I, it's not really my thing. Uh, thank you for the super chat, though. David G. Hey, Bancroft, not to be a stickler, but I've seen first four times. Uh, the first time was on January 15th. Okay, I'll go back and count. Thank you. I will uh, no, be a stickler, David. And thank you for the super chat. If, yeah, if you deserve four, this is this is a serious race you're all in here. Um, Bagroff was very let down that Shaggy and Freddy didn't bang. Uh, Proby says, I just started collecting Spider-Man's few issues before the Hobgoblin's first appearance. Sadly, uh, I used the water tattoo that was included in the issue. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I don't think I have the one with the tattoo. Uh, just a friggin' rad cover. Again, like, if you saw that on the newsstand, how are you not picking that up? Like, that's a story in a, in a really graphic image. And you're like, whoa, who is this? The Dalmatian? <laughs> the Spot? I can't remember. That's the thing. I don't, I don't remember so many of these guys. Remember when Spidey had the, the webbing under his arms? When did that go away? I can't remember. My, the next one might be one of my favorite all-time uh, covers i do actually want to make this into a poster it's just soak it in i mean holy cow like that is just glorious Sp uh, peter parker spectacular spider-man 101 like that is gorgeous burn yeah this might be one of my favorite covers of all time uh, just, I, I never, like the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. And then, you know, I never forgot it. Whenever someone would ask me like, like what, you know, what covers your favorite, that would always come to mind. Uh, yeah. Everyone picked that one up back in the day, says Jay Lee. Beautiful. I think Byrne drew it. Yeah. And that's like, that's serious talent to be able to do that. Like that ain't easy. You can see exactly what's happening with just black and white and he's almost not there. But they did other things in, uh, and this is, uh, so we're getting a bit further on. This is 87. This is sort of heading more up towards the era where I remember Craven was big. This is Vermin, it looks like. Um, the conclusion, I, again, I don't remember what happened, but this style was rad as well, like these covers. I dig these. Um, and Vermin, I love Vermin. He was, I don't know, there's something about him. He was like, he was like Marvel's Gollum uh yeah great stuff that's sort of more like a mixing it's somehow it looked painterly even though it's just really kind of flats and so uh, good stuff uh zek yeah it is zek you're right what no crotch no no don't mess with the punisher by uh sal there you go yeah I, again i wasn't a massive fan of sal but i didn't hate it i was just like it was just so different um, and especially as it went on throughout the years, I think it got even a bit more stylized and I wasn't really down with that at the time. I was really into like, uh, Bagley, but now look like at this, like this looks friggin' amazing. Like how good is that? And the Punisher just kicks ass spec. And that's the old logo. Look, spectacular Spider-Man. That's rad. Red, red, red. All right. Where are we going for time? Halfway through. Yeah, this looks weird. We're on Twitch tracking on time. Michael and beautiful family and the sexiest chat says Jennifer. I just want to say good night. Too loaded, lol. 
Hope to all see you soon. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for the super chat. I hope you uh, have a nice sleep, a nice night, and thank you so much for joining us. You're always welcome here. Um, Collins, I'm just waiting to start talking about the K values of these black covers. <laughs> uh, I don't remember this one, The Night of the Living Ned. You got uh, Gwen and Ned Leeds coming back there. Like, I don't know. I can't remember exactly what happened, but I just thought it was a rad cover. And I'm watching Last of Us these days, so... Uh, this looks cool. You guys probably have a lot of these. Spider-Man with Punisher on the cover, but not Spider-Man. They did that all the time. Hulks, Punisher, Wolverine. It was a thing. Uh, so here's... Cell. Yeah, this is more towards when I wasn't, like, really... So this is probably the first um, spectacular Spider-Man I picked up off the shelf, off the newsstand. So that's Sal again, you can tell. Yeah, like I said, I mean, not to put the guy down. He's obviously an amazing artist. It just wasn't my thing. But uh, I started collecting at this point. So everything you saw before that was um, was uh, was me going into stores, uh, going on. If this is pre eBay, uh, the, so I would I would go through like we had a thing called the Trading Post, and they had a comic section. You had to call the guy up and say, "Hey, I saw you wanting to sell some Web of Spider Man's. What issues are like that sort of stuff?" And then you have to drive out and get them. Like this is what it was like. Uh, so there's Vermin and Goblin all in one place i remember that vividly picking this up and reading it uh and i was hooked uh and then again i just want to show off like look they used to do cool stuff this is the 200th issue when was this it doesn't say what year it was but uh i mean yeah i appreciate that like that's good art like that is really that's really good and it came out great with the old uh you know so like hollow foil webbing uh treatment they did so many of these they did the hologram ones. Uh, they did a bunch. And I think these ones, these ones worked out the best. The hologram stuff wasn't as it did, like when I, I looked at them just before and I was like, you can barely see Spider-Man. I don't know if that's happened over time or um if that, but these ones, these came out great. They should have done more of these. Uh the four hologram ones. Someone tried to steal, or someone did actually steal my hologram books. Uh, from my house and I have to go and buy them again because then my collection was uh incomplete I mean probably says Bancroft has nice condition copies I figured his books have been rolled up in his back pocket as he was rollerblading for place to place I have some reader copies that are pretty ratty I mean this one here is pretty ratty like I mean it's probably part because it's uh um you know the card but there's some dents in it and stuff again like these issues weren't really for collecting this was like i got these to complete and read the series um the holograms are a mess says jasper yeah they were they probably sold very well how are we looking for time we are crushing it um web 100 with the spider armor i was the i was this close to bringing that snarker con but i didn't because i just i wanted to show off those first 20 because i'd like keep it concise um with how they looked in that first 20 issues or so. That, that those covers are so rad. All right. Let's get into some amazing. Obviously, the amazing is the one I have the least of. Um, because you know it started in 63 or 62, something like that. Um, but uh, I got a bunch. I got a bunch that I just I could pick wherever I could find them. I used to have a secondhand bookstore and I'd get copies like this. You know, pretty ratty copies. You'd pick them up for 10 bucks, 20 bucks, or something like that. But uh, if they had a, co if the cover wasn't too, like if it wasn't falling off, I would pick it up. And yeah, I'd love reading it. Like the, the smell of these things is just, it's, it's overpowering. It's pungent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, there's something about it. Like something about reading them. Because a lot of them you would read, that's Ramita. Look at that. That's Ramita right there. Maybe you can make that out um yeah you know a lot of them like you read them in the reprints and stuff and it's fine but uh yeah all right okay someone asked earlier which was my favorite run uh it was this one right here uh these uh 24 they think it involved uh it went all the way up to like 60 something 260 or something but uh i mean look at that cover as well friggin rad Amazing Spider-Man 254. The old comic book smells are intoxicating. They are. 
uh no no i mean when i say pungent i mean it hits you like a like a you just like transported back to being 12 years old again it's like pow like that one time i bought a comic off ebay and the guy had um uh this this jasper is leonardi and rubenstein uh and yeah I, ne I never saw this technique used before on a cover it's pretty cool um and someone had obviously smoked in their house and the book just smelled like cigarettes and it was it was very disappointing it ruined the whole thing uh for me but uh these books here so we got 260 uh 261 i've got the other one we'll show that later uh yeah these are red like this is a great friggin' Spider-Man story. I've got again. I've got the. Uh, I got the trade. Uh, I don't know if I have all of them, but um, yeah, just like. And this was me just going back and it's like, yeah, that was good. Like that was good stuff. Also, every, I mean, everyone loves Craven, and I do as well. Uh, Craven was amazing, and it, as well, it was another one of these things where I. <laughs> most says Bycroft is Bycroft is the Biden of sniffing comics. Come on, we all sniff them, don't we? That's the first thing we do. Um, uh, so what was I saying? Yeah, like when I read Craven as well, I was like, I love this. And that's before I knew any that it was a really popular um, run as well. Uh, so yeah, they were like pretty good books. Now let's get into when I actually started collecting off the newsstand. And so I already showed you, I already showed you that um, web uh let me just make sure i'm not yeah getting ahead of myself okay so i already showed you that web and then the next month that, and that was the last they didn't have any other spider-man uh on the shelf um and uh so i had to wait a month to get them out and, and, the, and the next one that came out was this one and uh i actually sorry it was this one sorry i'm getting ahead of myself it was this one and this is the only one i'm going to take out of the um cover here because i have to uh for you guys now imagine you're like 11 12 year old boy and you're you're like oh my friends are collecting comics i'm gonna go i'm gonna think i'm gonna start collecting spider-man i'm not 100 sure because it was a commitment like these were a dollar 50 um and uh you know I, I didn't have any really pocket money or anything i had to walk to school or had to save my lunch money this is the early 90s. This is 91. I had to save my lunch money. Does that mean like going hungry, walking to school, just to be able to buy these things and save that money up over a month. So I wasn't, but when I got this, I was like all in. Like this, the, the Web of Spider-Man one sort of got me interested. This one was like, that's it. Like we're doing this now. Like, I mean, I'm a comic book guy now. Uh, and I just thought this was the friggin' raddest thing ever. And I, instantly I'm like, I want to draw comics. Like, that's all. That was all I was doing at that point after that. I was like uh, tracing this stuff, trying to draw it by myself. And the, and the issue itself was, was rad too, because it's just like, it's all these guys fighting for, you know, 20 odd pages or whatever. And, and then it went into, I think it concluded, let me put this back. It concluded in the next one, uh, 359 um to my satisfaction if i recall that was uh yeah it's is it bagley or bagley i always said bagley but it's probably bagley that's how it's spelled you know i was 11 at the time um uh put that over here somewhere oh yeah so that concluded with this one cardiac attack and uh yeah that was it i was in like let's do it spider-man i i love the way he was drawing spider-man in the early 90s he got a bit stylized towards the end mo says it's pronounced bag lady <laughs> or past my says it's baglay <laughs> i don't know if you guys are uh you guys are um uh felix says bang had to walk butt naked through 40 miles of snow to afford these comics i did have to suffer for them i i, I, I literally did uh the only one I actually really asked my mother for money to buy was um, Spawn number two because that was it was there and I was so worried someone was going to take it and it was just sitting on the news shelf and I ran home and I begged as I like, can I get like the dollar fifty or two dollars whatever it was to and I, I did end up getting it so I was happy to get that but uh, 
Yeah, he, he, I know. Mel saw a later a Bagley. I think I've got it here. And she was like, what's going on there? I mean, it wasn't that much later. It was like two years later. But um, all right, let me put that there. Now, you guys all remember this, surely. Let me see if I may just make sure I got it in order. Uh, these are some interesting times. I knew when carnage started happening that this would be big. Uh, Jasper says he met Bagley, signed his uh, Spider Man 361. Nice, no, I thought that was the one right before this. Yeah, I knew when carnage came about this was going to be big, but they were just everywhere. Like these things are actually some of these books are actually worth something now, which is so funny because they were. They were printing so many of these. Like, this is the biggest thing out. And I loved Carnage. I love Venom. Uh, I, I sort of, I missed the whole Venom era, um, you know, obviously. But I went back. I got the trades. I got some of the issues, but uh, not many of them. So they're, they're so expensive now. Uh, I just think that's a rad cover. I don't, I don't really remember the Spider Slayers, but... That's just how awesome is that? And that's just friggin' great. That that's how I wanted to draw Spider-Man. Like he was all like that's how I remember Spider-Man. He's an adult, he's ripped, he's got adult responsibilities, he's not a little kid, but he still has that that snark when he fights. So um there you go. 361 is the first print uh, appearance of carnage i've got my key books we'll get to the key books uh, at the end jasper um again uh yeah so this is like i remember cardiac came back this was really good like i was a big fan of cardiac for some reason i don't know it's, i think it was just because it was how i was first introduced to spider-man and um yeah i just i think it was rad like this is like to me this is like peak this is the pinnacle of 90s Spider-Man. I kind of peaked early. This is 93. Um, oh, and there's this one as well. What part is that? That's three or four. Okay. Yeah, they jumped up. This is like a 14-parter. I guess they knew they had something good on their hands. These are all Bagley issues, yeah. Uh, that They really knew something they had, like something big here. With And this is this is the sort of transition of venom into a uh i guess it's sort of like an anti-hero he never could really be a good guy he was the lethal protector if i recall yeah and here so this is 93 again another one of those flashy foil books but you can see like he's starting to get a bit more stylized and that like if you look back at bagley depending on how busy he was like they could look pretty awesome or they could be pretty simple um like i think that is i must have traced that like 10 times that was just that is like classic this i could take a leave but it's still a cool cover still a cool cover all right jasper says i have that gimmick cover i mean it's still an issue it's still spider-man 375 um yeah, again, like after this, I barely even remember. I was just going along to get along at that point. I was into Ghost Rider. Um, I was into other stuff, but uh, yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, now I must remove the white dick, white face dick. We got 125 people watching this. Rob thought this was scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of topics. I know, people said they wanted to see this, so I did it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Please do give the stream a like. Please subscribe if you haven't. I stream about six nights a week. I'm doing daily shorts these days. If you're into that sort of thing, I'm wearing shorts right now because it's hot. Um, Rob is usually wrong, says Sar. Yeah, I mean, Rob's like, why are we talking comic books? Because Rob didn't collect any comics. He, he all he got was uh Judge Dredd and a little bit of Judge Dredd and a little bit of uh Phantom. I'm not putting them down, but it wasn't very extensive. Uh no, it's not over 88 of Surge. Now we got now we come to my key box. So these are the ones that I went back and collected because I wanted them desperately. Uh and some of them are issues that I got like because I wanted a really good copy. And some of them were, you know, key Spider-Man moments. Um, and some of them were just like, 
that's as old as I could get it. Uh, so, you know, stuff like this, like the first time, this, like, this is like the first time I got an older Amazing. So this is uh, issue 83. It's not a great issue, if I remember, the, the coming of the schema. Um, but it was the first time I was able to get, like, I don't even know what year that is. 83, that would be in the early 70s, I'm guessing. I don't think that would be in the 60s. It doesn't really look like the 60s either. It looks kind of 70s to me. Um, but uh, I was like, I was kind of hooked, you know. I like, I didn't mind spending a bit more on on this stuff rather than, uh, you know, getting getting uh, these cruddy issues. All right, what am I going to do with these? I need to put these in a safe. These are like, these ones are actually worth something. Got to be a Ramita, says Stephen Rockwood. Uh, cool Collection says Raging Rainbow. Thank you. Thank you, man. Now, this was a good copy. This was a good issue. Unfortunately, someone stamped something right over the top of it, which is a annoyance but uh issue 90 i love when they used to put these on the covers like just dig it anyway i love this cover he's like walking up the building spider-man the killer this is actually a good book i remember that don't ask me what's in it i just remembered that i liked it uh will before says the only old issue of asm i was ever able to find as a kid was 160 or something return of the chameleon i was once 20 dollars away from grabbing issue four uh, I literally had the money. He had the book. The exchange was about to happen. And then my idiot friend, 83 was 1970. Thank you so much, Perth and Cam. My idiot friend, did we just knock that? We did. Uh, come on, dive, Cam. My idiot friend said, oh, that's worth 400 bucks or something. And I was like, thanks. Thanks. You're a good friend. I uh, I didn't hang out with him after that. Any 12 cent issues? Maybe. Let me check the price. This is a bit of a classic. Uh, King size special number five. At long last, the parents of Peter Parker. Great cover too. Uh, I think this is, I think this is valuable. I can't really remember how valuable it is. It's a pretty good condition. I mean, there's a bit of wear down here, but uh, a lot of these things like, I read them once and I didn't want to wreck them. <laughs> so they, they're like, you get, they get one read and it's right in the bag. And then that was, yeah, 25 years ago. So uh, you guys might know. So that's definitely Ramita. You guys might know a little bit more about um, you know, what's in these than I do because uh, I've forgotten. How long have you been collecting these? I started collecting in 91. So I, I, I sort of stopped collecting old Spider-Man in about, uh 20 actually when i had a kid <laughs> there you go like that's when i all amazingly all of my disposable income just disappeared somehow so yeah that would have been like yeah 2012 I haven't really been collecting any old issues anymore I, I think i got a good collection though in that period uh for mike for real pumps back can you say you have no idea what's in 90 you need to reread it uh yeah maybe look i don't know like dude it's uh it's been a long, long time. I've done a, I've done a lot of other readings since then. So, um, you know, it, it, if I went back to it, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, I just remember how they made, like, I like, did I like it or did I not really care for it? This one I liked, I remember. This one I loved. I loved uh, Carnage. This is like peak new Spider-Man for me. And uh, this is a really good issue. This is a really good copy. Uh, there's a little bit of spine bend on it, but other than that, uh, it's got crisp, clean corners, and it looks good. It looks good. Again, this is what does this mean? The direct edition, not the newsstand edition? I don't know. I probably picked this up from a store. Uh, Mike, use your super chat money to buy some mylars and acid free balls. Yeah, I need to get some more mylars. I've got some mylars, but. Um, yeah, some of these, not so much. Uh, I do have acid-free boards. So I changed out all the boards uh, two years ago. How often do you have to change them out? I can't remember. Uh, I still think Venom was always better than Carnage. Yes, I agree, Wilberforce. Like, I like Carnage and Venom together because Venom was better. 
even though Carnage was more vicious and stronger in a lot of sense. Newsstand had a barcode. There you go. I do have a barcode version, but it's really ratty because I read the shit out of it. So I went and I bought this one um, later because it was really beaten up. Uh, right. Again, here we go. Here's some Mylar. This copy of Peter Parker number one, which I, again, one of my all time favorite Spider Man covers. Uh, who's who drew this? Who is this? They didn't sign it. You guys might know. I mean, classic, right? And it's this, it's telling a story, it's got that all the, the text on it featuring the stinging return of the tarantula. It is a good book, too. Like, it was a good start. Uh, it was a good start. Who's saying yearly? What, you have to change out the acid boards yearly? Change boards every 10 years, unless using mylar and fullbacks, then change once enter every 70 years. Okay, well, there you go. Anyway, got this on mylar. I have another copy, but this copy is like, I can't find a friggin' floor on it. It's 9.8, 9.6 minimum. So happy with that um i got some good ones i got some good ones amazing spider-man 252 in very good nick introducing the new spider-man this i managed to get when i started playing poker uh, when i started playing poker i had a bit of uh the old uh disposable income i think this needs to be upgraded to my life. i think so this is a really good uh good nick comic uh, you should do a special alt cover like this for the Lucent for fun. Yeah, this is an expensive book now. I think ever since, it, you know, the black suit happened on the movies and everything, it's a good book, Pum. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, this run was great. This whole run was fantastic. I do remember that. Technically, the first appearance of the black suit was the, well, in a Spider-Man book. I think the first appearance was in the Secret Wars, wasn't it? Jas was like, Mike, you're killing me with these poly bags. I'll I'll get it sorted. I know I've got like the uh the the the, the comic shop isn't too far away. I'll get I'll get I'll put them in something nice for you, Jasper. Who drew this? Friends. There you go. Another again, great covers. Freaking great covers. Uh my single issue of my one of my all-time favorite ever Spider-Man comics. This is part of that Hobgoblin. Um, like it went, it wasn't a run in the sense that it used to have, like like they're all together. Like it happened over years, I think. The sort of the, the slow uh, development of the Hobgoblin as a character. At least my, my trade, it's like it jumps all over the place. But, you know, I all consider it part of the same thing. I mean, for me, it all happened at the same time. This is 82. This book, I think, is worth it. It's, it's not great copy. There's a stamp on it. The edges are a bit ratty. But, um, eh, I love it. Great. I just love it. Like, that's Hobgoblin, like, ripping his, ripping his costume apart. It was cool. Hobgoblin was great in the early days, says Will Force. He really was. I'll pray. Secret Wars 8 came out eight months later. All right, there you go. I didn't. I can't remember. Again, you guys remember a lot more than I was sort of out of out of it for a long time so i went off and did other things um there's that one we talked about craven earlier and you also asked do i have any 12 cent books ask and you shall receive amazing spider-man number 47 uh again another one where i just read it once very carefully probably put on cotton gloves <laughs> i mean it's not a fantastic copy it's got a lot of discoloration and a little bit of uh things happening on there the paper is very old but this is obviously obviously in the 60s craven has never looked more fabulous he looks a little bit like um david bowie in the labyrinth last night uh michael i'll give you 13 cents for that issue i i uh i think i paid more than 13 cents for it from the year I was born, says Cam, 1967. There you have it. Would you believe? That's like such a Stanism. Would you? Would you believe Craven the Hunter? This old uh, Spider-Man. I love that. That old Spider-Man um, trade 
thing. What is it called? Trade dress. What is this thing called? The box. I can't remember. That Craven book is the same age as me, says Gary. It's a great comic and a great cover. Yeah, it's just dope. I can't remember how much I paid for that, but I probably paid enough. Um, anyone looking to do any uh, homage covers? <laughs> Shelby, you want to do another homage cover? Do you want a Lucent? Does anyone want a Lucent Amazing Spider-Man 300? I do have this in my lot, um, Jasper. You will notice this copy is immaculate. There's only a little bit of dings on the corners there, but they're very small. I don't know if you can even see them. No, let me go down here. They're real small. Uh, yeah, great copy. Another one. Read it once, in the bag, locked away. Uh, McFarlane, what can you say? I, uh, I sadly wasn't able to get much McFarlane Spider-Man. It was like he was he went out of it just before I got into it. So, um, and it was all, and at that time it was pre-internet. So it was all, you got to get them from the comic book stores and they were charging like crazy amounts. Um, but uh, yeah, great, great looking comic. Now this one, what do I show? Actually, I'm going to show my only, my only slabbed book. I bought it slabbed. I didn't get it. I didn't get it slabbed. Uh, but it's a seven of uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 21. Looks like we've got the Human Torch and the Beetle. So I've never read it because it's slabbed. Uh, I don't know. I think I got this in a bundle. I don't I don't usually like to slab books. Uh, but uh, it looks like, you know, it looks really good. Off-white pages. Um, authenticated by the CGC. There you go. So that's my only, my one and only. What's on the back? What do you think? Oh, see the back? Look at that. That's cool. I like in sled books, you can see the back. That's actually a cool, uh, a cool thing. Crack it and read it. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Can't read. You can't read. Like every single book that I bought, even all the back issues, I read them at least once. Crack that slab. Well, I'm not going to crack it now because I don't want to. I look into how to actually crack slabs because I don't actually know how to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, again, really great cover. I mean, that's that's super cool. As a kid, you know, like what did I come into? Three fifty something. Um, to have an issue twenty one, that's pretty cool. Like I'm pretty chuffed on that. All right, let me move this over here. We're getting up to my prize possession. So when I uh, when I made a bit of money in poker, I was able to I was able to buy some pretty good books. And these two are probably my prize possessions in terms of Spider-Man books. Crack those slabs, take them off the grid. <laughs> yeah, that's a great shorts content. Um Think of how young the character was back then. The first cartoon wasn't even out. I know, right? Just a different time, huh? All right. Now, this one, I do not believe the, the condition of this comic. It's, with my layman eyes, it's a friggin' 10. It is mint condition. I've never seen a copy anywhere like it. Uh, so it is sort of my prized possession, one of my prized possessions. There is not a single dent. There's not a single bit of piece of paper where it shouldn't be. I did go through it very carefully. It's white. It's like it was printed yesterday. It's the first appearance of the Punisher, Amazing Spider-Man 129. Uh, an amazing book. The, I mean, you guys should see this in the flesh. Actually, the, 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 the camera is actually picking up. It, it's so vibrant. It's a classic Spider-Man cover. It's a classic Spider-Man book. It's the first appearance of a lot of, a lot of, you know, favorite of a lot of people. So, um, woo, it's white. <laughs> now I'm jealous of Bancroft. Sumo says, that's the issue I want. Yeah. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it probably was a lot. It was probably over a grand uh, or something. I don't know. 
But uh, I didn't always get lucky on eBay. Sometimes you get screwed. This is an eBay purchase. Sometimes you get that manic gleam in Bancroft's eyes when he says, it's white. Uh, but uh, this time was like, I really lucked out. So that's in my large Jasper. Safely locked away, acid free, all that good stuff. All right. Now, I also, I don't know what year it was. I'm going to say 2011. I won, I came second in a poker tournament. I bought myself a watch and then I jumped right on eBay. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to find anything. But I was willing to spend pretty much what it took to get a grail book. And as luck would have it, there was one in Australia. The guy needed to get rid of it for financial reasons. So already good. The back coupon is cut out. So you can forget like high CGC grades, whatever. I just wanted it. It's an amazing looking copy. Uh, and yeah, I was able to get it. I didn't get screwed over. It has to be obviously the uh, the prized possession of any uh, Spider-Man collector. Amazing fantasy number 15. I did read it in cotton gloves. I think the actual story in it, the Spider-Man story is only about 15 pages. They managed to get all of Spider-Man's entire backstory up to with great strength comes great responsibility into like 15 pages. Stan and uh, Steve did. And dude, like actually reading it in the flesh was like my heart was actually pumping when I received it and read it. You've got yellow flash in here. You get one this year, dude, do it. It's like sometimes whenever I'm feeling down and how yellow flash. I just remember, I've got Amazing Fantasy 15. I always thought I would get, uh, no, I'm not selling it, Flash. Sorry, I'm not. I always thought I would get uh, number one bef before, because this is like, this is the first appearance, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I guess it's all just about the quality. The, the only reason I got it so cheap is because someone cut the, cut the coupon out and the guy was desperate to sell it. Uh, but, you know, it still costs thousands of dollars. Now I need to know what watch you bought. Oh, I wasn't, it wasn't a massive watch. It wasn't like a Breitling or anything. It was a, it was a, one of those the yellow flash says I have almost all 900. Dude, that is insane. That is insane. I've got all the spectaculars up to when I started collecting, which it was I started in the mid in the early 90s. I got all of the webs. Um, when I say all, I've got they got all the webs. I don't know, I don't, I don't have all of the spectaculars after a certain point. So I, I stopped collecting new comics after that point and I just went to back issues. But yeah, Amazing Fantasy 15, obviously, Growl Book, Pride of My Collection. Uh, what else can you say? It's just like maybe one day I will somehow take over the comic world and the lucent will be as big as harry potter and i'll just go and buy the uh amazing number one in cash we can dream huh or i'll just win the lot actually it's more likely i'm gonna win the lottery uh need to know more about the poker tournament buy in field knockout hand uh it wasn't it wasn't that big you know i i think i only won like i won five figures but it wasn't like massive Mel says, keep dreaming. No, I'll just keep working. I still do want that amazing Spider-Man. But Flash, that's awesome, man. All 900. That is, that's rad. Like I've got, what have I got? Two or three from before uh, 100. So yeah, there we go. Well, everyone, that is my Spider-Man collection. Um, whenever I talk about collecting comics, that's pretty much what I'm talking about. I've got some... Um, I got some uh, Ghost Riders, some X Men, and stuff like that. But mostly my comics were purely just Spider Man. Flash says, My ASM is a two. Nice. Trying to get uh, a three of Amazing Fantasy. Yeah, dude, that ain't cheap. Every And every year I look at it, they go up. Uh, I'm going to have to, I think, invest in a, um, a safety deposit box for these things because they just keep going up. And it's like, at one point, it's like, it's kind of worth a car. 
and then it just gets snout sound like worth two cars i don't have craven's last hunt jasper i know it's a, i i always wanted to grab it i mean I've, I've got the trade but you know it's one of those things uh that i do i'm missing some some key issues that's for sure uh all right i think that will be it uh tonight tomorrow i'm gonna close out lucent waking dream uh second chance edition Yellow Flash says, uh, AF15 is a blue chip book. It'll always be worth something. Yeah, that's why I'm holding on to it, buddy. <laughs> Not selling. Not selling. Um, and yeah, so please do come back. We've had a, we've had over 100 people into this whole stream. That shows people, they still love comic books. I love to see it. Uh, Spider-Man was always my number one character, obviously. Uh, so it's great to see you guys still love it out there. Thank you, everyone, for watching both here and on Rumble. I hope to see you tomorrow. We're going to close out, have some fun. Maybe get some some pals on uh, to uh, to uh, close out the campaign. But until then, you are, as always, the most incredible, amazing, spectacular, and phenomenal, sexiest chat in all of CG. I will see you tomorrow night. Until then, I hope you have a great one yourselves. All right, bye. Individually, we are weak, like a single twig. But as a bundle, we form a mighty 